being in a New Testament church. Amen. Psalms 133, verse 1. And I don't know about you, church, but I don't want to, I don't want this church to go uptown. And all churches have moved uptown, like Brother Kelly said a while ago. They, they've got their new Bibles, and they've got their new versions, and, and everything. But I tell you, I'll just take the good old King James yeah, Version. Amen. Amen. Because I tell you, church, I, I believe it's the original. And I tell you, if you have to, I know, see, the Bible gives us the Holy Ghost. Amen. The unction of the Spirit that we can have understanding. What it is a lot of people don't want to study and amen, don't want to get into God's Word that the Holy Spirit, amen, could teach them. Amen. amen. But as we look into Psalms 133, beginning at verse 1, it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. I tell you, church, for every time that we need to have unity, it's now. I'll be talking about that just in a few moments. Amen. It is like the precious ointment upon the head of the, that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down onto the skirts of his garment. I mean, it, it, well, he was saturated with God's anointing. Amen. And church, for every time that the church needs to be saturated with God's anointing, have that unity, church, I, I believe it's now. And as the dew of the Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life, forevermore. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you tonight, Amen. Jesus. We love you tonight. We praise you. Know, God, that we need to get back to the old past, God. We need to get back, God, to the New Testament church, God. We need to get back, God, that we can worship you and praise you, God. We need to get back, Father, God, that Lord, you're the Lord of our lives and you're the, you're the leading of the church, God. God, I pray for the anointing of every heart, every soul here tonight. I pray tonight, God, that your anointing will go forth. And Lord, anoint the people's hearts and minds. Anoint me, Father. God, that I can bring forth the word, God, that you want me to bring forth, God. And God, we give the praise in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Now, united means that we have a sense of a vision and a purpose. Amen. And I was thinking about doing If the churches could get back today, Amen. And be like the day of the Pentecost. And the Bible said they were in one mind, amen, in one accord. In other words, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 11, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, amen. And church, I believe today God's people needs to get in one mind and in one place. It doesn't make no difference what this upon the door, amen. We need to get in one mind, amen, amen in one place, amen, and, and come to a place that we can worship God. Amen. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, until we all, it says, till we all come in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. That should be our desire tonight, amen, in the church. That was a desire of the New Testament church, amen, to have, amen, the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Church, because if we know Jesus, oh, I want to know Jesus, Brother Kelly. I want to have the knowledge of Him. I want to know He's there when I need Him. I want to know, praise God, that He's there, amen, His blood forced by sins away. I want to praise God no, amen, the same spirit that he had that raised him up and that's going to raise the us and the church up. And church, I want you to know tonight, if we as God people can get together in unity and have the faith and have the knowledge that God wants us to have the church. You talk about things happening in the church. You talk about the world wouldn't be in the shape or our nation wouldn't be in the shape as it is right now. Like I preached this morning, this world is getting ungodly and this world is getting to a place they don't want to even think about God. They don't even want to talk about God. They don't want the name of Jesus even mentioned. The church that I begin to walk in His faith and, and walk in His knowledge. I want more of Him. Amen. I want the church to have more of Him. Amen. That's the whole theme. And Jesus said on, on, on this rock, I'll build my church. Amen. And church, that's the theme of the church is Jesus. Amen. Let's get everything out of the church and Amen. let's put Jesus back in the church. Amen. I'll give a little hand to that tonight, church. We need to get one mind, church, and one accord, and, and, and begin to 
believe that Jesus is here to, to lift us up uh, and we're here to worship him and to praise him and to bring us into a place of fellowship uh, with what with faith and knowledge. And church, if we never get to a time place uh, that we have that unity, you, God can use his people the way he wants to use us. Uh, and we're looking at the names uh, and just get in and worship God and praise him. I want to go to a place, uh, amen, uh, that I can feel the presence of God. I want to go to a place that they lift up the name of Jesus. I'm not interested in having a big name. Some preachers want to have a big name, church, and have a lot of fame. But church, they leave Jesus out. I want Jesus back in the church. I want Jesus, praise God, to be in a place that we can be united with Him tonight. I'll give the Lord a hand clap, church. We need to get to a church. Now, the New Testament church, they believed. Amen. When you got saved, you got saved. Can I say that again? I said the New Testament believes that when you got saved, you got saved. Well, the Bible says repent and be converted. And convert means, amen, to turn around. You're not the same person anymore. And church, let me tell you something. There's too many people come to church anymore. And they go to come to church and they cry just a little bit of God of tears. And they get up and go back out the same way. But church, when I went to the altar of God and when those tears come down, I was a different person. And church, let me tell you something. If you don't repent and be converted, you're not saved. You don't have the goodness. Can I hear an amen? And church, this is what Jesus said. He said in Acts, praise God. Chapter 3, verse 19. Repent and therefore be converted that your sins may be blotted out. He'll never blot your sins out if you don't believe and you've got your mind made up that you're going to turn around and serve Him and let Him be the Lord of your life. Oh, praise God. Amen. The Bible tells us, it said to Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I'm going to tell you, church, when I got saved, I was a different person. The Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yeah. All things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. And church, let me tell you something here. When you get saved, a lot of movie stars and a lot of musicians and everything, they say that they know Jesus. They say that they're a Christian. But church, let me tell you something. If they really got saved, they would be going to the places and saying no honky-tonky things. My Bible tells me, amen, you can't drink sweet water and beer water out of the same fountain. I'm here to tell you when I got saved I, this, this old hokey tokey music left me and I want to hear the spirit of God. Amen. I want to pray for the fountain of God. Amen. Oh give it on a hand clap church. Oh. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become a new. And church, the New Testament church, they believe in repenting and they believe in being turned around and being a new creature because the Bible says all things have passed away. And church, let me tell you something. This old man that don't live here anymore. I said this old man don't live here anymore. He died a long time ago. Jesus lives in me. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap. Jesus lives in me now. Praise God. We got too for many dead, dried up churches. And the Bible says in Revelation of the Laodicea Church, the rich, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. And church, that's what the church is today. It's abomination to God. And God is. God is bothering us, amen, right now because of where the some of the churches are. Just give me an old town homeless church, amen, with just a few people. And I know they're being converted, and I can preach them into heaven. Everybody's going to heaven, but nobody's going to hell. If you don't have me to amen, repent, and you've been not converted, you are going to hell. And I, as a pastor, and I, as a preacher, got to tell you, if you haven't repented and turned your life around, you will go to devil's hell. Amen. Oh, glory to God. The Bible tells us, Colossians chapter 3, verse 7 through 10, in the way which also we walked at some times. You know, sometimes we need to look back and thank God for where we come from. Amen. I walked an ungodly way. I wasn't, a, I wasn't a really a wretched sinner. Amen. I didn't kill nobody, but I was a sinner. I done some cussing, done some drinking. Down a little bit of dope and all this stuff. You know what? When I got saved, God turned me around. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you where Jesus took me from. He, I, got, I repented and got converted. And the old man was dead as dead man. Yeah, Lord. Um, but the Bible says, And when he lived in them, but now, you also have put off the, these uh, anger, wrath, malice, blaspheme, filthy communications. 
It's amazing. You can look on Facebook and people say they're Christians. One minute they're praising God, one minute they're thanking God, and the next thing they come out with these little three-letter words. Let me tell you something, church. Uh, the Bible tells us to have the good communication. It tells us, uh, amen. I can't imagine Jesus saying some of these dirty words uh, and praising God the next. Uh, I'm here to tell you, church, when God saved me, He cleaned my mouth. Uh, I said He cleaned my amen. mouth. Uh, he didn't put no soap in it, but He put the Holy Spirit in it uh, and cleaned my life up, uh, and the old man don't live there anymore. Amen. I'll give the Lord a hand clap, church. <laughs> Filthy communication out of your mouth. It says, verse 9, lie not one to another. I tell you, we live in a time, Brother Cal, you can't believe Christians or so-called Christians. If you're a Christian, I mean, you could, when I was growing up, you give somebody your word in a handshake. I mean, that was like writing down on a piece of paper. But now you can write it down on a piece of paper and you still can't believe it. I tell you, you got so many lying, so-called Christians. Amen. Sometimes I even have to hate to invite people to church. They'll tell you they'll be there and the Lord in their heart they're not going to be there and tell you that you're going to be there. They are lying, church. And the Bible says that God has got a place for all liars. Oh, praise God. Bless the Lord. Woo, I feel this tonight, church. Bless I'm talking about a New Testament church tonight, church. Amen. Lie not one Amen. to another, seeing that you have put off the old man. That's what I'm talking about tonight, church. Amen. The old man, I say, Sister Rosemary, say that song about the old man. Amen. The old man's not here anymore. Amen. We need to let the devil know, praise God, the old man is not here. We need to let our children know the old man don't live here in that this old tabernacle anymore. Amen. Praise God. Now put on the new man, which he is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. All oh, glory to God. Aren't you glad you're created him? Amen. Oh, that you got that new man in you. That's why the Bible tells the New Testament church that them people, they, they were changed people. And church, let me tell you something. I believe today that the, the church needs to have people come in and really get saved and changed where they can get their loved ones saved. The reason why the church is not full today is because we have so many religious people saying they're on their way to heaven and they're saying that they're living right and they're not living right because their fruit is telling different and their loved ones are watching and they say, if they can make it to heaven, I'm all right. If mom's all right, I'm all right. If grandpa's all right, I'm all right. No, you're not. Oh, give the Lord a head clap, church. Oh, glory to God. The Holy, the, the Bible tells us the New Testament. Amen. Church was a was a Holy Ghost driven church. Amen. Church, like my brother Kelly said a while ago, we need to have that Holy Ghost having filled our lives. Amen. Amen. And church, be, have the have the be driven by, be driven by the Holy Spirit. I don't want some made up service. I know I put songs down and everything, but I tell you, I'm, I'm sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I'm sensitive to the anointing. And church, let me tell you something. We need to come in and we need to do away some of these programs and everything and say, Dear Jesus, you just come in the Holy Ghost. You take charge. See, God wants the Holy Ghost to take charge Amen. of the service. Amen. And church, let me tell you something. If you've got the Holy Ghost in you, praise God. When you come to church, you're going to have something. You're going to show something. That soul's going to be anointed. That, uh, are you listening to what I'm saying? And that testimony's going to have some anointing about it. And when you come and pray, lift your hands up and begin to praise God and worship God, the Bible says His Spirit goes from breast to breast. And church, I'm here to tell you tonight, it's time that we get the Holy Ghost back in the church. Amen. Because let me tell you something. We need to have some signs. We need to have some believers. We need some miracles in the midst of the church. And it takes the Holy Ghost to bring forth those gifts. And church, we don't have it today. I'm talking about this church. Amen. We got Holy Ghost filled people in this church. And we should have signs following the believer. Can I hear an amen? And church, let me tell you something. We can lay hands on people and they can be healed. We can have the gifts of knowledge and gifts of wisdom. We can have gifts of miracles and gifts of faith. And church, I believe the churches are coming up short is because they're not following the direction of the New Testament church. I'll give them on the head. Oh, how we need the testament. I pray, church, I, I, I don't know, I was talking to one of the, one of the pastors retarded. I tell you, they're, they're having a hard time finding the church anymore. Well, I, I don't talk to Sister Maggard. And then we'll have probably a hard time finding the church if we ever retire because they just don't have any good churches. Yeah, and I'm going to find me a church if it's right. got 10 people or whatever. If they've got God in it and they got the anointing in it and they yeah. love God, that's where I'm going to be. I'll give the Lord a hand. Yeah. Praise God. 
The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 2 and 4, it says, And there comes a sound from heaven like a, as a mighty rushing wind, and filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as far, and set upon each one of them. And they were filled with all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, church, let me tell you something. If that whole church in the, the, the TV Tampa church was filled with the Holy Ghost, then why can't we be filled? I know, church, all we've got to do is ask for it. And God is not going to give us something that will hurt us. And the Bible said they were all in one mind and all in one accord. And the Holy Spirit come down and they begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Yeah. Church, I don't have to teach you how to speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit will do it, or you don't need to be doing it. Can I hear an amen? amen? Amen. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2. Well, let's, let's go to Mark chapter 16. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. It says, Then these signs shall follow them that believe. I tell you, church, we need to be, have some believers. The Holy Ghost will make a believer out of you. Amen. Mark. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. The, the Holy Spirit will cause us to be men to be believers. And, and there'll be signs following us, amen? I'm talking about we're going to live holy. We're going to talk holy. We're going to have the gifts, and we're going to be maybe directed to the Holy Spirit. Oh, I thank God we still got anointed and Holy Ghost filled churches, church that they can, amen? He's not jumping over the pews. He's not going on the chandeliers going around and around. He's not jumping over the seas. He's having God's anointing upon you and the love of God upon you and have the Holy Ghost upon you that you can have, you know, speak a tongue and get to have proper and have the, the gifts, amen, that the side will follow the believer church. Our church is coming up short, and God give us a direct a direction of how the New Testament church ought to be. And church, we need to recognize the New Testament church, and the church hasn't changed. Amen. God hasn't changed. The Holy Ghost hasn't changed. Jesus hasn't changed. People have changed. And the Bible says, in my name, they shall cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. And they shall take up surface. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, for they shall lay hands on them, on the sick, and they shall recover. That means that this was a Holy Ghost people, church, that has got the anointing and got the power of God. And church, it takes the Holy Ghost. As I said many times, when in the missionary fields, a lot of churches are they're, they're begging for Pentecostal people to come in those missionary fields because they've got the Holy Ghost, they've got the anointing. And they, 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 trust me, tell you something if you don't have that force of the Holy Ghost about you, you'll never defeat the principalities and the powers. And you talk about witch doctors and doctors of devils and everything else. If you're not spirit filled and you don't have the anointing and power of God for your life, you will not make it. Amen. Because they will get the best of Amen. Signs shall follow us. Oh, I thank God for New Testament church. Amen. 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 You know what I like about a Holy Ghost filled church? See, we, we love the Holy Ghost. I mean, when we was growing up, church, uh, people weren't educated like we are now. And it's good to have a little education. Right. Amen. But let me tell you something. It was that I went to churches a lot of times and, and say, Oh, praise God. We, Brother Kelly, we had a Holy Ghost filled service. I mean, but if God come down while we were singing, while we was up praying and everything, and I didn't get to preach. Service after service, they didn't get to preach. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost will not take the place of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. That shout will, I, I said that shout will leave you. Amen. And church, after that emotion left them, and after that anointing left them, the Holy, the, after the Holy Ghost, amen, uh, got in and everything. But when they got outside, guess who was waiting on them? The devil was waiting yeah, on them. Right. And they were defeated. But the Holy Ghost, praise God, will come in and he'll cause you to hunger after the Word of God. And cause you to hunger and walk in the Word of God. And church, he'll cause you to have love like you have never loved. Church, He'll cause you to have unity and love for, with the brothers and sisters. It'll cause us to love one another. It's okay to talk in tongues. It's okay to shout. It's okay to have those gifts. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You can have all the gifts but you don't have the love of God and the power of the glory of God and the Holy Ghost upon you. It don't make no difference how much the Holy Ghost you got. If you don't have the fruit behind it, I'll give the Lord a hand clap. The reason why that, that a lot of people turn off by the Pentecostal people is because, amen, they speak in tongues one minute and they're talking about the name of the next. 
or they're using some kind of four-letter words and everything. Can I hear an amen? amen. The Holy Ghost will clean you up, church. Amen. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap. Yes, this is something we all need. Amen. And number four in closing tonight, a New, a new Testament church is a, is a growing church and a worshiping church. I said it's a pray, it's a growing church and it's a worshiping church. Oh, church, we need to praise. And church, let me tell you something. I know we, uh, some, if we don't have a testimony, we don't need to stand. Is that your name, man? But if you've got a testimony, some preacher, one person, I, I don't know how, I, I just don't know I, when I stand up, I just don't know what to say except uh, I love Jesus. Let me tell you something. I grew a person stand up and so you know what? I love Jesus and sit back down and get up and have a 15, 20 minute dried up testimony. Amen. Amen. Or something uh, giving de the devil all the credit. He just get up and say, oh God, I want to let you know something. That church, I want to let you know something. I, I'm saved on my way to heaven and God has moved upon me and he's given me strength and yeah. given me power. That's a Holy Ghost driven Amen. church and it's a praising church. Yeah. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 46 Acts chapter 2, verse 46. See, we got to come together, one mind and one court. And the Bible said, and they continually, we got a lot of church people. Can I say it? Amen. We got so many church people. They got this one, one old time religion thing, one night a week is enough. Thank you, Lord. I said, one night a week is enough. That's true. If that's all you got, I don't think God's pleased with you. Amen. I know if you're, if, if, you're, if you're sick and everything, that's different. Now, if you don't love God, Jesus said, why do you not pray with me one hour? Now, and often people, they'll pay their tithes, and, 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 they're, and, they're, and they're trying to do their gift, or their guitar player and everything else. They'll pay what time they're there when they do come. And, but he said also, tithe your time, amen. And church, if we can't spend about four hours a week to serve God and worship Him, amen. there's something wrong with it. Right. I think we need to go back to the old-fashioned order and get saved again. Yeah. Because when I got born, I said, when I got saved, God put a desire in me to come to church and to worship Him. Amen. And when I come to church, I got this almost close to the front as I could, not all the way in the back. And I'm not talking about the people in the back, but let me tell you something, the back is for the sinners. That's why the sinners don't come anymore because amen. they have their forces set in the front. Amen. Uh, Bless you, Lord. <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Praise Bless God. You. If you don't shout with me, I'll shout myself. Amen. 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 Oh, glory to God. <laughs> and, also, and they continue daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. Amen. And did and he meet with gladness and singleness of heart and praising God and having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily, yes. such as should be saved. Amen. Oh, Amen. glory to God. I'm going to be in the New Testament church, won't you? Where something is going on. You can have that old dead up, dried up church, that old dead mega church. Now, I'm not saying all mega churches that way. And I'm here to tell you, the Bible said that in the late, last day, the layouts of church, yeah. I mean, I, I, they're, they're, they're just so many beautiful buildings. They see how beautiful the buildings are and how luxurious the buildings are, and they're just like dead bones. Amen. Yeah. The Bible said you're mid, mid, uh, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, and you got Jesus on the outside. And church, I'm here to tell you, I want Jesus in here. Amen. The Bible said he, he walks in the midst of the church. I want to walk, him walk in the midst of the church. I want him to hold me yeah. in his hand. And when I yeah. preach the gospel and have the anointing of the Holy Ghost up on me, and I'll be pleasing to Jesus. I come to worship Him. I come to praise Him. I come to glorify Him. I come to shout and praise with Him. Because let me tell you something. He said, Come and praise Him. Praise Him for what He's done for you. If He saved you, set you free, and took the old man out of you, you've got something to shout about. You've got something to worship. And you've got something but oh bless Him, Lord. Oh, let's stand tonight. Glory to God. Oh, how we need the New Testament church.